And as the parts in bold where you uh, respond. And then they tattoo Karikia, Kiatan my to Ranga Chilatanga, Kirunga Kitafinua, Kiariti and Loki to Tirangi. Hara Tiaho my for time my to Marmatanga. Kitchi my to Korio, Yua Kiamata, Tiatata. For time my to Wa, Kirunga Yatata, Tiranga Chilatanga or Tiatua. Kitirongopai. <laughs> Ki te whai tātou i te ranga tiratanga o te atua, ko o tātou i ngā kau ki te tikanga o te atua, nā tātou i te katoa i ngā mea hoki. Rongo ki a te kareiti e kauhau nei i te rongo pai mā nā nake e o ti ai. Ki a te Wai tātou e karangahia nei e te atua, hei ti o tātou e mātou ona, hei ti e kahana. Engari, hei whakamā i te tohunga, ka tohia e te atua teira, e whakawātea no ai te ao. Hei whakamā i ngā mea kaha, ka tohia e te atua teira e ngai kore ana ki te ao. Hei roto i te kotahi tanga o ihu kraiti, ko tātou ngā tamariki a te atua, ko iri iri tia ki roto i a te kraiti, ko kakahuria e koutou a te kraiti, ka hore e hurai, e kiriki i rānei, ka hore e tāne, e wahine rānei, kotahi tonu tātou i roto i a ihu kraiti. E tō mātou matua, ki a tai mai tō rangatia tanga ki runga ki te whenua, ki li te anau ki tō te rangi. E te kai tohu tohu o te rangatira tanga mutunga kore, te pirinihi o te rangi mārie, te toa o ngā kore take, ko koe te kihini. Ko tō torona ki ko te ritaka, e tātara noa te karauna. O pōnoa, e hoan mau, a whina tia mai mātou ki te mau i au mātou rītaka, ki a hia kai ki a tieinu ki ngā mea e paiana, me tērā ka putā ke tau rangi te ratanga ki te whenua, ke rite ki tō te rangi. E te atua homa te rangi mārea ki a whiwhi mātou i ngā mea e kore, E taia e mātou te whakarere e ke. Te hautoa ki te uri o ngā mea ka taia me te māramatanga e mohi ai ki te rere ki tanga. Te atua o mātou o ranga haere mai ki a mātou mo tēnei rā. Hei ranga i te koa, ka hore rā nei, a whina tia mai mātou i te tainga mai o te pō. E te maumahara mo tētahi mea. E whakawhetai ai mātou ki a koe. Āmene. Ana tātou i bine. We should know this one off by heart, nera, nera. Ti te ro mai e te atua. Ti te nelei whakami nei nga. Yeah, <laughs> 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 
Hey, this is um, session eight of our fucking new program, and again, it's on on leadership. But um, hopefully, this particular session is a carry on from the one we had in Topol. And I suppose, on just a quick recap in regard to um, this particular session on leadership. So quack, we are swimming as quack as we can, Mama. How to part of this picture? Any comments? What does that, um, um, what's the word, signify to you? Everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh. Well, it looks like a mother duck with a with a little ducklings. Yeah, yep, it is. <laughs> but Maybe. in regard, yeah. Cafe. Just leading her ducklings safety, safety. Yeah. But the comments they like say, oh, "We are swimming as quick as we can, Mama." Basically, I think sort of also emphasizes that we are all at different levels of leadership, eh? And sometimes we can actually try and overcome the situations or we tend to lag behind. And so, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So all those mother duck are saying, hey, hurry up. And the little ones are really saying, hey. <laughs> But in regard to this leadership, issue. <laughs> Again, the question we pose from last time is what is leadership? Well, me, are uh, you asking me? Well, either one, either one of you. Oh, okay. Where was it? Yeah. Well, it's the, it's the person that, um, that's there, that stands at the front and take control of whatever is happening. Okay. Yep. So can you define it a bit more or anyone? Mm, like, well, like our bishop. He's our leader at, you know, because he's the bishop of all of us. 
Yeah, yeah, true. But what about yourself? Do you not consider yourself a leader? Um, yep, I am. Yeah. You know, my household and, yep. and what I'm doing at the moment with the kids, yeah. Yeah, and within your ministry as well, are you? Um, yes. Yeah. When I have to stand up and do all the mahi in the church house mm -hmm. and at tangis and stuff too. So in a sense, leadership is a manner and approach of providing direction, isn't it? Like say you, as a mother or even as a teacher, you provide that direction for your kids and even in the ministry. We provide direction for our people. And the implementation of plans in regards to our maybe strategizing um, our, within our worship centers, within our church, within our huyamarangi for that matter. After a lot of um, deliberation and consideration, we do implement plans. And mm -hmm. those plans and the direction that we give hopefully will motivate our people to support the total, whatever it is, <coughs> as you say, our bishop wants to put in place. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And again, I think leadership is more about developing a positive attitude amongst ourselves. And they're transmitting that to others to encourage them to reach a common goal. I think the classic example for that one is what we experienced over the weekend. On Saturday evening, watching the election results unfold. Mm. You know, um, I'm saying, and I think if we were to analyze it as well, looking at the different leaders, what type of leadership was motivating them? Mm. You know, Jacinda Ardern, for example, what type of leadership do you think she was portraying right throughout her campaign? Oh, uh, to me, she portrays this um, this young vibe. She has got that young vibe in her. And she also got that, when I look at her, I, I can see honesty coming off her face. Um, and she's, she's just... Uh, yeah, true, honest person to me, anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. To me, and I don't mind being uh, her being. I mean, I'd put a dirty big tick in front of her because of that. Yep. And Judith Collins? No. 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 <laughs> Not a nice lady, eh? Mm. She's nasty. I'm saying that's the sort of thing, type of leadership they portray, though, isn't it? Yes. Mm. I mean, gosh, I wouldn't even, can't imagine our country being run by that lady. I'm saying Maori Party. Well, um, that, what's his name? A fellow white titty down the coast. He seems yeah. all right. Yeah, he seems all right. He seems pretty straight up. Um, what's his name? Coffee, Tamati Coffee. Yeah. I like too. But uh, he never made a great show this time around, eh? So you can see the different, um, I suppose, directions that each one took to be able to try and grab those votes to put them back in, into government, didn't they? Yeah, yes. Uh, and so each one was totally different. Yeah. Each one came from a different angle. Yes. But at the same time, each one of them was still trying to motivate the people to, you know, yeah, vote. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. And of course, out of that, um, we actually look at the different types of leaders, eh? Yeah. Um, just move that out of the way. Yeah, that's, that's good. Those are good examples of leadership. Yeah, they are. They very, very much so. I'm saying as leaders within the church. Yeah. We can certainly ourselves incorporate some of, or if not all, the types of leadership attributes that we're going to be um, having a look at very briefly. Okay. But again, each one of those would actually depend on the situation we find ourselves in. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Let's say, for example, where have you gone? Autocratic or authoritarian. 
Mm. I'm going to say, would you actually use that type of leadership in your mission, in your ministry? No. No? No. Anyone else? Yeah. 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 You're getting almost to bully tactics when you, <laughs> use, <laughs> when you use. Unmute yourself, Chief. You unmute Tewaka. No. Oh. Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, I like bullying people. You like bullying people? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, sometimes they do need bullying if they are very shy or very backwards in coming forward or need some assistance. Now, <laughs> there's one or two people that I can think of immediately who will hesitate in trying to do something, but I'm not saying that we do that with all people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are different types of people. So we just have to be um, observant in ter in terms of our people and uh, the type of uh, leadership that each one is required. Yeah, autocrat, so there's nothing wrong with, with the authorita authoritarian, pro provided I think that you learn to step back as well. Okay. Well, um, I think m maybe you can, yeah, be a well, bit authoritative, yeah, you, in, yeah. at the moment, but also you got to be, yeah, like you said, be humble with it, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> you, otherwise... Otherwise, you'd just sound like a big bad wolf. <laughs> <laughs> they need to gobble him up. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got to be careful, and especially because, yeah, I mean, around here, and where you are, well, I mean, they, we're all fun over here. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but do you, no, not, <laughs> do you not think that being um, an autocratic... See, at, the, at the moment, my, my crew is behind me, and I can't bully them then to come and watch instead of them doing backwards and forwards with a cup of tea and worrying about the hearing aids and <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's more important? <laughs> yeah, yeah, come yeah. here. But Chrisley. Chrisley. So so there is so there is a place for this autocratic um yeah. type of leadership, but again, yeah. Um it depends on the situation that you may find yourself in. Yeah. You're to be, um, yeah. Yeah. But just a better for dem democratic. Would you be that sort of a leader? Pardon? Would you be that sort of leader? What's that? A democratic participator. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I I think I can be authoritative, democratic. You got you got a sort of kind of a yeah. You can't be just one way all the time, otherwise you look like a pushover. <laughs> hmm. So where do you think you'd lead, use that type of leadership, the democratic type of leadership, in the in your ministry? Yeah. Um, let's see. I think I'd use it more on my youth. Okay. Yeah. I think I would use it on the, um, the youth. Yeah. Well, my, any, any particular reason? Um, well, for me, you would be kind of a, well, I mean, you have to be careful around with anybody you know you got to to um don't be pushy or anything but with our with our you i think you could you gotta be a bit pushy and not so pushy yeah hey but there you go you're combining the autocratic if you like yeah and the democratic types of leadership aren't you yes mm. 
Cool. You know, if you want them, to, especially if you want them to row up, walk that um, tickle road, do you? Yeah, you yeah. can't be too pushy. You know. <clears throat> so there's a fine line between those two. Yes. Okay. Yes, there is. There is. And what about a charismatic leader? Do you find yourself one of those? Oh yeah, I'm good at that. <laughs> 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 you need all right. You need all right. Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shy. <laughs> <sighs> you got to be that too, because, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, so you mix well with people as well. You yeah. got to have that thing where you can go in to anything and be able to, um, to um, what you call it. Mix and mingle and socialize because you have to. It's all about that networking too, eh? Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. You know, small and yeah. all that sort of stuff, eh? Hey, you know, pull it out of the toolbox, you know? Yeah. You, you, yeah, you have to. I mean, you know, we're, we're a ministry too. So we got to, you, you got to be something like that. Yeah, I don't forget Norma. You might have to unmute yourself, Norma. Norma might be on, not on mute. Yeah, I think she is. Unmute yourself, Norma. <laughs> ah. No, it's not me rubbish. Tapai. Yeah, yeah, it's really fun with the rod. Oh, you might get a little bit of spotting. Once in the blue moon, but other than that, oh, yeah, I did in the beginning. Yep, yeah. good. Oh, I'm like, you count yourself lucky, my friend, because <laughs> yes, yeah, so, but tell you, mate, if she's bleeding consistently, it's not, yeah, she like bleeds. Oh, okay. So, there are times when we can again. Those three there would fit into your ministry, Depend, again, depending on where you are at. Yeah. And you're right, the charismatic leader is that one that... Who's all there? Because we as Māori, um, we use humour a lot, don't we? Yeah. And I think that's part of our charismatic yes. um, leadership style too. We yeah. include, we include humour. <coughs> Um, and in many ways, just to break the ice. Yeah. So that, adds, that adds to our charismatic, um, yeah, type of leadership, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and for me, it's kind of easier when I'm around here because this is all my whanau, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I know them from out to Manawi. So it's not a problem. But I, if I go to another area. Oh, well. I just have to behave myself. <laughs> <laughs> but amongst your whanau, that's probably a good training ground for you in regards to experimenting, if you like, or trying to utilise all those different types of leadership. Yes. Yeah, so, um, and I think that if you're able to do that, from my point of view, is that then it helps build up your confidence. So when you do, say, come into Tello or come this way, for example, yeah, um, yeah. You're quite confident to be able to stand. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, yeah, that's a that's all good. I mean, it doesn't bother me, eh? That kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. But it's just, you know, you just got to really cross your 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 T's, eh? When you start, <laughs> you got to behave yourself. Just stand there like a good soldier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what about a servant leader? Whereabouts would you utilize that? type of leadership in your ministry? Well, Call it all my whanau. With me, with the kids, <coughs> I use it a lot. I use that a lot with the kids. <laughs> I run around for them. Which one was the on? Do everything for them. And I, I think that's what I've done with Democratic. Where are we, Joe? Sorry. Um, we're actually... Um, Looking at a servant leader, the type of leadership. Oh, servant leader. A okay. servant leader, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I don't mind if, if um, Mari just keeps getting my coffee. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, somebody's got to get the coffee and the tea ready and everything else. I mean, that's part, an important part of the uh, of the gathering. Um, but I suppose it's just like having preparing a a meeting of importance. You and I know what Mari think about us if our meeting has no kai. Well, that's true. You can have the best meeting now, but then when there's no kai, ah, come on. Those the people, people never feed us. Yeah. No don't white bait there. Place. It's like, don't go to that place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk to her. Talk. Yeah. Sorry, Mary, I can't. I can't hear what you're oh. saying. You, you have to just, just speak up. That's all. I think what Mari is saying is she likes to prey on people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that sounds as though Mari's a an autocratic type leader. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, God, you make these people listen to me. <laughs> yeah. But in regards to this, I'm going to say in many ways, that word servant can be um, interpreted in many ways. As we've just heard, like say for a while, like it's um, running around after her, uh, her kids. Yeah. But is yeah. that actually being a servant? Or is that just being a parent? No. Not when you're looking after how many kids in the Sunday school. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and then again too, like when I know somebody is Mawiwi, I go to them. I mean, they don't even have to tell me. I go there. I just know. So yeah, I, because I know I, I get sent, so I just got to go. So I guess that's a servant. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. And of course, Mari running around after Te Waka, would that be servanthood or abuse? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 oh, but then again, that is like a good servant too. I yeah. mean, you know, that is. And yeah, doing cups of teas, making cups of teas. Yep. Like Very us. important. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. But again, again, the um, the definition of a servant can actually um, involve a number of a number of what would you call them tasks, I suppose. Being a parent, being a, a cup of tea maker, for example, or even within your ministry, eh? Yeah. The servant, the servant leader is really being yeah, able yeah. to assist those that require your help. Yeah. Cool. Well, isn't that what we call the people who assist you at the uh, table? Yeah. At the uh, communion table? Yeah, what, true. Yep. what do we call them? Um, uh, assistants? No. Um, Sacristans. Mm. Yeah, the sacrament. Yep. Gosh. What do you call it again, Mari? Um, Chalice bearer. Chalice bearer and mm. things like that. Yeah. Mm. It's all played a part in it. Exactly. Cup bearer. Yeah. Cup, cup bearer, the bread bearer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so being a servant leader, I'm saying every one of us, doesn't matter whether we're um, priests, archdeacons, canons, bishops, um, we're still a part of that whole concept um, of the type of leadership. And so we do incorporate, as a member, we incorporate all four in many ways. As part of our, our leadership, <clears throat> and of course the delegative, or the laissez-faire one. Delegative. How do you say that, Joe? Delegative. Delegative. <laughs> Thank <Yes>. you. <laughs> right, and laissez-faire. 
laser fire, yeah. This one, this one here is, is uh, similar to the democratic, if you like. <clears throat> uh, democratic type of leadership. So that everyone gets involved in making the decision. But at the end of the day, someone has to take responsibility for the actual outcome of the decision making process within that particular type of leadership. Can you identify anywhere within our ministry that that type of leadership would? A delegate, you do yeah. that. You do that. Delegative. Yeah. You know, you um, if we have a big um, like ordination or something. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen you doing the delegative thing, telling where to go. <laughs> I mean, sent me up to do a reading one time there, and I had to go up there and do that reading too. I'm thinking, oh, God, I hope I mean, and, and that's good. I mean, I've seen you doing it up at the Palmu, you know? So, mm -hmm. I don't think Norma's got her thing on. Yeah. Norma, can you hear me? No, she can't hear us. No, she's she's got her what do you call on the mute button. Yeah, yeah I, I can't unmute her either. You can't unmute her. No, no. She has to unmute herself. Can you make some sound signals to her? <laughs> no, this is <here. laughs> normal. No, no. Can you unmute yourself, Norma? Yeah. Hey. Oh. Well. Okay, no, that was awesome. That was awesome. Um so in the house is a good Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's all right. It's on so we do understand that depending on the situation we find ourselves in. Yeah, you can actually utilize any one of those or all five um, at at that time. Hey, yes, yes. Whether it's to get a point across, whether it's in um, our preaching, whether it's in our um, the readings, for example, a whole lot. It's comes cool. really as a package, hey? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna say one day I could be a charismatic leader, and the next day I could be a, an autocratic leader. So, but it's just really. Good to understand the different types of leadership and how they can encompass your ministry. Yeah, and just just depending on the situations you're in. Wow. Type Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But we also, um, as part of this leadership, and we also acknowledge that there are a number of different leaders, eh, within within our men and within our churches. You know, you've got the Kuanga Whakatipu, the Rangatai leaders, Kahui leaders, Vestry, Committee Kainga leaders. And many of these different types of leaders are noted in our Tuapapa document, Nera. Mm. But I think the purpose of this one, of this presentation, is to focus on the, yeah. on the positions of leadership and the levels of leadership. So when I talk, when we mention that, it's from laity to the bishop. Which includes holy orders, roles, the functions, the office, and the title and positions of each and every one of us. Can you can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you, Phyllis. Oh, can I hear you? So yes. if, if you can unmute unmute the button, just unmute. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll put it back up. I'll put it back on because uh, at the moment I've got a couple of people here and with the mokos. <laughs> oh, that's okay. All right, okay. So moving on from our types of leadership, as we just mentioned, we're going to be looking at um, the positions of leadership and the levels of leadership. And hopefully, 
as we progress through this um, PowerPoint, those things will actually come a lot, become a lot clearer. And we're focusing on laity, from the laity through to the bishop. And the, yeah, their roles, their functions, mm. um, yeah, and everything in the course, the office and the titles and the positions that each one holds. Yeah. Copay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Uh, Ruth here. Um, there, there's also a taste for um, recording that there are different types of uh, leadership um, different types of leadership um, in this in the one person. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And that's uh, what we're, sorry. I th I think of um, Tuatha as being an authoritative. <laughs> <laughs> He's always bossing us around. <laughs> I need bossing around. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> so so there's room for that in each one of us. Oh, absolutely. As long as we read what's happening with the meeting or who we yep. and, and reply accordingly. Absolutely. And like I say, um, those five that we had out, each okay. one of those types of leadership mm. will actually uh, apply to every one of us. And yeah. at times, at different times within our ministry or all together or at one time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm you'll have to work on Tawaka in regards to him being an autocratic leader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay. Moving on. Holy orders. What are holy orders? Define the word holy order. Holy order. How do you say it? Holy order is like marriage. Marriage. <laughs> Not in holy above ours, is it? <laughs> <laughs> It's the <laughs> I think what you just said, Ruth, that orders are, appear to be part of your <laughs> you <Yeah>. order the round. <laughs> anyway. Holy orders is like something you've you know, you've been especially in the ministry, I think it's something you've been called to do. Um something. yep, you're on the wrong, well, you're on the right track, yeah. You know, um like um like when you go and you do a marriage, that's something holy, isn't it? Baptism. Um, but isn't that done by a big priest? Even doing the 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 the, the our um, services in the morning. Yep. Um, up top, up at the altar, there. Is that right? Um, I'm not going to say you're wrong, but that does imply. The word holy order certainly implies exactly what you're saying. Um, but in, in regards to this, um, what we're looking at in regards to the, like say a priest or a deacon or so, holy orders, to define it. Is it pardon? To define holy orders, is to define as the ordination of Christian clergy. Ah. Specifically when someone is ordained as a deacon, priest or bishop. Okay. Okay. So when you're, ordained as a deacon, a priest, or a bishop, that's when you receive your holy orders. Um, and to define that a wee bit more, we could say, why is this sacrament? Because holy orders really is a sacrament. Why is the sacrament called holy orders? It's, it's one of them. Oh. See, the word order designates an ecclesial ecclesial body into which one enters by means of a special consecration 
and that is ordination. Through a special gift of the Holy Spirit, this sacrament enables the ordained to exercise a sacred power in the name and with the authority of Christ for the service of the people of God. So everything you are saying, Wadaka, is actually true. This is where you get your authority from to do what we do. So, okay. So mainly, it's it's uh, and it's it's ordinations. When into... we talk about holy orders, yes, you're right. It's ordination. It's um, being ordained. Yeah. Um, as a deacon, priest, or bishop. Yeah. Oh, okay. And each um, and as I say, that's where you actually get your your authority. As a priest, that's where we get our authority to baptize, to consecrate the elements, to marry, and so on. As a bishop, on well, he would have his own um, different roles and functions as well. Kumar <clears throat> Manira. Hi. 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 Uh, I, I think it's just a, a matter of knowing what to do and, and, and where the sacraments are, are found. Yep. Well, in the uh, in the red book as well. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's been committed to those holy orders. Yep. In in a in a humble way. You know, it's all about a attitudes as well. Yeah, true, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And and, and preparation so all, all all those sort of things. Yeah. And and uh, and and learning how to deliver those those, uh, those uh, sacraments, yeah, and where and when, <clears throat> and to who and whom, yeah. Then and the other thing is, um, you know, uh, what you do to others, you do to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Mm, In other words, yeah. if you you love others as you love yourself. Oh, that's right. Nera, yeah. Go go go. Where am I going Mm. Ah, yeah. It's, it's like our, our chikanga, you know, chikanga Māori, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all about the genealogy, you know, papa, papa. So it's all, it's all that in there, eh? Yeah, yeah. So when we're ordained, this is where we as a priest, as a deacon, as a bishop, get our yes. authority. Yes, to, yes, to that's right. Those, yeah. Mm. And and and, uh, and and when to use it, yep. when to use it, and when not to use it. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. True. This. Um, yeah. In in regards to baptisms, weddings, and yeah, confirmations, and all those things. Yes, say. that's right. Oh, that's yeah. Right. If yeah. you're in a confirmation class, there's a yep. list a list of the holy orders that you have to learn. This is where Sunday comes in. Are those holy orders or the sacraments you're referring to? Yeah. Oh, there's that the sacrament. Yeah. Are you talking about the um catechism? The catechism? The it's a big what's that song you teach in your confirmation class? Oh, how many sacraments are there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm getting mixed up with. Yeah. yeah. So, don't forget, we're referring to the Holy Orders, and the Holy Orders revolves solely around the ordination. The ordination of a person to the office of a deacon, priest, or a bishop. Right. Um, and it does imply that it's, it's one of the... It's, it's a sacrament as well. Okay. Okay, the next part is the role and function. The role and function of each, from as I mentioned, laity has a role and it functions within that role. So does a deacon, a priest, a bishop, and so on. Okay? Yeah. So looking at the role of a lay person or laity, what do you think their role would be? Or what would their vocation be? 
um, the layer. Yeah. Barry, can you speak directly into the mic? Because I can hardly. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. It certainly sounds as though you're on the right track, but I couldn't understand exactly what you're saying, Murray. Sorry. Hi, <coughs> Chief. Can you just, um, yeah. I think that one of, one of the roles of Pulayati is assisting in the service, um, for instance, reading the um, But is, is that the role or is that part of the function within that role? Am I confusing you? Oh yeah, the, the, <coughs> they come under the heading lay reading. Okay, for example, <laughs> the role of a lay person, for example, I'll put it up. Their vocation is to witness to Christ in the world using the gifts the Spirit gives them. That's their role. That's the lay person's role within the ministry, within the church. It's to witness to Christ in the world. Whatever the gifts are, to utilize those gifts that the Spirit gives them. That's the role. That's more or less what, what um, Mari was trying to say. Yeah, that's, I couldn't understand what you were saying. That's why I was trying to get some, some clarity. I thought it sounded very similar. But then when we look at the function of a lay person within that role, how do you think they function? Um. They function by sharing in the leadership of worship and the governance in the paria or in your worship centre. But those are the real um, nitty gritties, if you like, the role and the function. But if we teased it out, this is where everything else will come into play. Um, how do they share in the leadership of the worship? How do they share in governance? And so these are the... Um, what would you call it, fleshing it out a bit more, this is where you'd include, they can do this, 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 and this. This, this is where um, and we in St. Xavier's, and in particular the Wainga family, yep. uh, they live it. Uh, the whole well, family is involved. Yeah. Hmm. And again, that, that's how they would function within their role as a layperson. Within the church, hey. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool, Madam I, uh, Sometimes, I mean, when I was a congregation, I just thought I was a congregation. Oh, I okay. didn't, you know, I didn't know that there was things that I had to do. Hey, I was just going to church and going home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and I think. A lot of the, a lot of the people that do come to church think that that they just turn up for um, church and go home, and it's only the really the vestry that sort of rolls everything along when they're there. Ah, oh, okay, yep, yep. Yeah, I think the uh, I uh, oh for me, I didn't realize that they had a real big function within the church only accepting for me if we were um doing fundraising or you know have to do things like that yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of bring it together to help with it but it's good to be able to identify exactly that there is a place there is a place for everyone in the church and there is a role for everyone to play in the church and it depends on how we function within that role it certainly helps to mitigate a lot of things within the church doesn't it yeah, it's being, it's being inclusive in the church. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, mm. and sharing and yep. getting and getting the uh, the lay people to uh, 
and congregation to share, whether it's going to be in readings or karakir. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can no. do that, you know. No. And, giving, and giving them a place in the church. Yeah. Yeah, we need a chance to use their gifts that God gave them. Absolutely, absolutely. So you're not just a number one of them. I mean, the, uh, the, the congregation is, is, uh, is, uh, is a part of the church. If we didn't have a congregation, we won't have a church. That's right. Yeah. So it's including, being very inclusive. Yeah. Well, we do. We do get everybody to get up and read it and all that stuff. But yeah, there's still a wider thing again, eh? Wider purpose for them. But this is now identifying that actually everyone's um, everyone has a purpose within the church. And like I say, everyone that comes to church is not just a number. Yeah. Um, it's not just the bummer on the seat as well. I'm saying, yeah. they all, every one of us has a function, mm. has a role. Well, no, when I went back to church, that's what I just thought. Oh, I went to church to worship God, and you know, that was it. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't. <laughs> well, um, yeah, well, uh, when my mum and them were going, well, they used to do fundraising and all that for the church, but uh. Mm -hmm. To actually function in church, I don't know whether because I don't think they hardly ever she hardly ever went because it was a moving church, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, and it was. Joe, yeah. When you're speaking, you move your hands and they they get take up a lot, quite a lot of the screen. <laughs> you're, you're moving your hands. Oh, so I keep my hands still. <laughs> <coughs> Thanks for that, Rich. <laughs> All right, um, moving right along. The next one. Hold on, keep on. The role of a kai karakia. Yeah. <coughs> We've just spoken about a laity, eh? To say that the people. The congregation, members of the congregation. Yeah. Yes. Now we're looking at the role of a kai karaki. What's their role, do you think? To lead the prayers and, and the church service. Yeah. It's one. And the kai karaki can take a funeral, um, a nehu. <coughs> All right. So the role of a karaki, the ministry of a kai karaki is to be a servant, both within the church and in the wider community. That's their role. Well, that's their ministry, I should say. So how do they function within that role? Again, I think some of you have picked up on, on the, the little the task that the kai karaki does. Yeah. So if we look at the function of a kai karaki, admittedly they're commissioned by the bishop and licensed to assist. Yeah. And in the cases lead worship within their community. Yeah. Kai karaki are licensed and <laughs> priests in charge and serve as a member of the ministry team. And they may read the holy scriptures, preach, distribute communion and the service, lead services, and we're granted lead services alone, including burials. Yeah. And that's how they function eh, within their role. And again, it says Karaki is to be a servant, both within the church and in the wider community. Are you, are you saying, Joe, yep. uh, in that uh, second to last line, a uh, distributed communion, yeah, that's fine. Yep. But that, that is just with the, the bread, uh, yeah, with the wine. That right? Communion. I know, and the bread. Not the bread. No. And and That's lead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you lead services under supervision. Yeah. And when granted, lead services alone. 
and and the thing is what services it won't be the the, the eucharist oh no no absolutely not absolutely. No. I'd say if you, well, um, well I, I think we need to be very specific when you say lead services alone including burial yeah yeah, yeah. i think that yeah no you're right Dom, because i think it's part of the training of a yes. person moving into the um to become a kai here they need that's to understand right. that's right so, because when you put that in there they, they think they can do everything <laughs> that's true yeah that's true. So, so we need to be you know yeah. explain it properly so as part of our training yeah we need to certainly understand which i've always done is that there are three things that a kai here can't do what are they that's right the absolution is one. Yep. And calm baptize. Baptize, yeah. And marry people. And marry, yeah. I got him. The altar. The, the other one, Joe, is that the, the, the Kai Karakia are there to assist with the um, distribution of the elements. Yep which are both, cause both the bread and the wine. So they can, so they can do both the bread and or the wine. Yeah. Okay. Because I know there are some, there's some, um, what's the word? What's the word? Discrepancies in regards to what they could do in regards to the distribution of the elements or the sacrament. Some would only let them, allow them to distribute the wine and not, the, the so I think that's, uh, that uh, what do you call it a um um how can I put it uh, it sort of follow it um chikama that sort of follows the church the oh, area okay. like say for instance say faiths and if they're strong in their in the, they're strong in their um uh, Oh, okay, yeah. I think I know where you're coming from. Yeah, if they're strong with their priesthood and their thing, then they they won't allow that to happen because they're high church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they're low church, <laughs> I'm saying that that's that's actually quite good because I'm saying I was of the opinion that Kai Karakis could only distribute. This is me. Um, could only distribute. The, uh, the wine. But I think if you read your, your, if you read the what do you call it in the prayer book, yep, they are allowed to, to, to distribute and, the wine and, and the bread and the bread and all the bread, though. Yeah. Okay. And they can baptize in an emergency. Baptize oh. in an emergency. <laughs> no, 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 I disagree with that one. Yes. Uh, deacons can. Uh, depends what you call emergency. Well, that's right. When the baby's dying. Not that's because there's the priest is not available. Yeah. Hmm. Awesome. Bye bye there, Wadaka. Yeah. Are you having second thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, you're not one of these. <laughs> okay, the role of a deacon. Assist the priest. Assist the priest. <laughs> but a priest can assist the, the priest. Of a deacon. Um, it's the same as the priest, really. Um, no, um, it's not, sorry. <laughs> Uh, it's basically the administration of the um, the administration of the parish. That's where the big uh, difference comes in. Um, there's an assistant to keep the the registry and everything and all those sort of things. The straight in. Oh, okay. Oh, boys. Yeah. All right. So the role of a deacon really is the ministry of a deacon is to be a servant both within the church and in the wider community. That's their role. Yeah. 
you, do you notice any any comparisons between the Deacon and the Kaikara gear? No, not in, no. Uh, I'll, go back, I'll go back a slide. Yes, there is a difference. In the church. The role of the Kaikara here. To be a seven, both within the church and in the wider community. The role, the role of a deacon mm. to be a servant within the church and in the wider community. Mm. Why is that? Well, probably it's a, a, a larger um, parish. The priest can't do it all. Well, why is the Kaikaraki and the deacon's role the same? <clears throat> Maybe it depends on how long I've been in that, that role. Well, I think the the, um, the simple answer is that a Kaikaraki is a deacon in training. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So when the Kaikaraki is ordained a deacon, it still performs that role. So they're both really the same, with the exception of what? What would the difference of the kaikaraki and the deacon be? I think it's got sacramental. Sorry? The, the stoles, you know, they're actually wearing stoles, the deacons. Sacramental. They're wearing the garb, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where so, uh, the doesn't doesn't wear those. They they can wear the white, I guess, but not the stoles. So what does that actually mean then, Waira? Well, it means I'm a deacon and they're kaikaraki. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> As a well, lay, and still lay people, but not yes. being consecrated. Exactly. Ordained. Exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. The kaikaraki is commissioned. Yeah, it's commissioned. A deacon, a deacon is ordained. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's basically the, the, the difference between the two. So other than the spelling between the deacon and kaikaraki, yeah, that's the difference. Mm. Yeah. As it says, deacons are ordained by the bishop and enter, enter into holy orders. So this is the first of the holy orders that are issued when you move into your the um, ordained um, <clears throat> ministry. Deacons serve in the name of Christ and so remind the whole church. But serving others is essential to all ministries. And they have a res special responsibility to ensure that those in need are cared for with Christ-like compassion. And I think as Tawaka picked up on as well, um, they do have special tasks within the, within the, the church as well. And it's interesting to know that some people may be called to become a permanent deacon. And we do have a few of those people. While others may be called to, yeah, into the priesthood. Before, before we had the, um, before we had uh, the, the separation or the Pahi Mihinari, um, Deacons and deaconesses. Yeah, they, they were uh, in the um, sort of, I think they, they doing were doing a bottle of deacon. Doing a bottle of deacon. Yeah, that's right, because I'm. Um, did you know that? No, you're right, Ruth. There was, yeah, there was another um, title that was referred to back in the day of a deaconess. Deaconess. S. N E double S. A deaconess.
Kapai? Is that the deacon is female? Is that a yeah. female? Yeah, it is. Okay. And of course, again, but this is where deacons may baptize, but again, only in emergency. <coughs> what I mentioned, what is an emergency? Yeah. And I think an emergency in this case is um, if there is no priest available and it's um, part of their last rites, say. Oh, um, the, the second to bottom line, Joe. Yeah. Um, deacons may baptize. Well, that yep. should be in brackets under. Uh, but I, I think we cut it out in in the Maori. I think uh, we should put out, put out that part because it's confusing for Maoris. They go ahead and baptize anyhow. They call they call everything emergent emergency. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but emergency really in my understanding is um is part of the last rites service. So. Yeah. It's the last rite type of thing. Yeah. It's not a it's not because there's no priest available. No. Yeah. Mm. Just that moment, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. On that moment. Yeah. It just um, begs the question, would they also be allowed to anoint somebody who was dying? Ah. Should I ask the theologian? <laughs> um, I can't see why not. I know, I haven't, uh, I've, um, in a couple of situations, I didn't allow a deacon to um, anoint. Oh, not if a priest is available. Mm -hmm. I think only, again, like um, deacons may baptize, may read the Holy Scriptures, may bury. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. In terms, in terms of the function, if there is no priest available, I would imagine that God will allow the uh, praying of or the healing of a person important. You don't wait for a priest to to, uh, to drag him out of the drain if he's drowning. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so, are you saying that would be part of the last rites um, service? Well? I, I would think that would be part of the last rite, but only like like I said, if there is no priest around. Right. It's like having a tonga around, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have to be on an island, eh? That to have them with no priest. <laughs> well, we always seem to be an island in the Puga anyhow, so what are you worrying about? I'm just thinking about more titi, for instance. <laughs> eh? Yeah, the dry, no, no, you're right. Out yeah. <laughs> Kapai. Any other questions? No? Cool. Oh. Here we go. The role of a priest. How do you know what you're doing? What are you doing? Oh, it's a novel. Oh dear. Uh, uh, the role we have a priest is to build up the body of Christ in the world. Yeah. That's their role. So how do they function within that role? Walk the talk. Huh? Walk the talk. Make sure your books are in order. The <laughs> real <laughs> <laughs> is coming up. <laughs> You're gonna have your you're gonna have your reports done. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> and your statistics right. <laughs> <laughs> so if the role of a priest is to build up the body of a Christ, then they function within that role through the ministry of the word and sacrament, pastoral care and teaching. 
And so if you look at the functions, and that's when you tease them out to include all those other things that Tawaka mentioned. Yeah. Statistics. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Rick? Inspiring to their yeah, um, leadership. Yeah. 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 Um, ability to uh, preach. Yep, absolutely. Inspirationally. And again, as it is, priests are called to build up the congregation, strengthen the baptized, and lead them as witnesses to Christ in the world. Priests are to be pastors sharing the people's joys and sorrows, encouraging the faithful and those who fall away, healing and helping the sick, proclaim God's word, taking part in Christ's prophetic work. And so that's how they would function within their role of building up the body of Christ in the world. And as you notice on the bottom line there, presided Eucharist, pronounced absolution, marry. And those are the three things the other two you cannot do. Have you got a special heading um, for canons? No. And <laughs> a canon is a priest. He's not a bishop. Uh, we've got a lay canon. Yeah. Two lay canons. Yeah. It's like having a lay, lay canon, um, a lay clergy. In other words, he's really a canon for the, uh, for the lay people, <laughs> not for the clergy. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Pase? Can I go now, Pase? Okay. And I think I think sometimes people aren't quite sure what a canon is. Oh, oh right. they find the big guns. They find the bullets. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're the, ones, they're the ones that fire the big bullets. Then. No. Yep. I'm saying we'll actually go. We'll actually get into that um, very soon, Ruth. Yeah. Um, the difference between the different levels of, of leadership. I mean, Patty Nicola is a lay canon, but um, Minnie is, is a um, priestly <laughs> canon, a, priestly. a teaching canon. So she teaches. Bucky, yeah, Bucky orders. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the role of a bishop? <coughs> oh, the, the role of a bishop. Yeah. Um, Very simple. Look after all his, his ministry. The ministry of a bishop is to be a pastor and shepherd. Yeah. That's his role. To his, to his not to his flock, but to his... <laughs> So his priests and yeah, is to look after the priests, yeah, and the deacons, yeah. So to be a pastor would be yeah. I think that's where dad would come in to looking after all his clergy and ministers and everyone else, and the shepherd part would be yeah. Um, the people. So how would the bishop? function in that role. Why Wave not a big, you in the meetings? We have a big stick. Yeah? Uh, yeah. So you start, have a staff staff for uh, staff what do you call it? He <laughs> <laughs> holds a big staff. He holds a big stick. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so the bishop to function would be a teacher of the faith. Focus on Christ's unity and mission in the world. So what does that mean? Lead the mission of the church by example. Shepherds who care, heal, reconcile, uphold justice, maintain wise discipline. Mm. 
um, promote peace and unity, and so it goes on. This, um, Bishop is head pastor with for all who are in the flock, and this is here, yeah, and they may baptize, preside. It's quite interesting that it says it's may. bishops may <laughs> baptize. So what that's saying, I think, is it's at their discretion if they want to. Otherwise, they could leave it to their priests. And they, but they, they do the confirmation the way. The yep. bishops. Yeah, exactly. Need them that does those, isn't it? Yep. So there's two that the bishops don't, they must do. And that's why, like I mentioned, one is confirmations and the other one is? Um, oh. Ordain. Yeah, ordain. Ordain, yes, sorry. And confirm. Yes, yeah, so this one did. Confirm, ordain, and discipline. Oh, yes. Kapai? Mm. Yeah. Now, Wailaka, if you want a copy of this um, presentation, um, yeah, just um, ask uh, Jasmine. Okay, I will. I think I need it. <laughs> I've been doing my notes. Okay, we've, we understand our leadership roles and the roles of each, um, I suppose, leader within the ministry laity, kaikarakia, deacons, priests, and of course, now the bishop. So, what we're going to do now is go move on to um, what I refer to as the office and title of each one of these people. So the office and title, each one of us holds an office. I say that again. Three of us hold an office, but everyone holds a title. You understand what I'm saying? For example, if we looked at um, the office of a kaikarakia, what would that office be? And what, what was that question? Office. What's this office mean? What? Yeah. What does this office mean? No idea. What does it mean? Um. Uh, I can't hear. He's a servant in the church. Give us, give us, give us three, three uh, choices, and we'll take one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I suppose to understand exactly what I'm talking about when we talk about the office of is. <clears throat> As we spoke about earlier on, when we looked at um, the ordination of a, a deacon, a priest, and a bishop. Similar, eh? Each one of those are then ordained into an office. Okay, and this is where part of the holy orders tend to explain that the office is really the office of that particular person in regards to the holy orders that they receive at the ordination. And the titles come with those um what do you call it particular office you like promotions or yeah particular office so in regards for example in regards to the kaikarakia one the office of a kaikarakia of course is licensed laity why is that because the kaikarakias are commissioned they're not ordained at this point oh. Okay, and the title of a Kaikarakia? Here isn't one. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Miss or Hey. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What would you call it? Exactly that. Mr. Mrs. Miss or why not? Uh, oi. Oi. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Lay of Mrs. Whatever. Yeah. Because it's um, they're not in the ordained ministry at this point. Yeah, they're still laity, if you like. Well, they are. Mm -hmm. they're, they're part of the, um, they're part of the worship team. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So, and I think we've already sort of established that what, what is the difference between a kaikaraki and a deacon? <coughs> uh, 
Um, I'm a uh, reverend. One, no. What is the difference between the kaikaraki and the deacon? Commission. Uh, he's commissioned and the deacon is ordained. Kapai. Yeah. And so in reference to a kaikaraki, a licensed laity, this person is commissioned and accordingly conducts services as per their respective bishop's license. This is my home health coaching. Oh, yeah, I know because I've got, I've got the same one. Okay. 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 Okay.
Do you understand what Reef is perceived? No? And she's right that a canon was appointed as part mm -hmm. of a chapter to the cathedral. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two definitions in regards to this word canon. One is that the title of a person to the chapter of a cathedral. And the other definition is the actual canons that we actually operate under. The canons and constitutions of the church. And the canons actually, where do the canons um, derive from? Church law. Hmm? Church law. Yeah. The canons that we use on our church. Where do they derive from? Did you also know that the New Testament is also referred to as the canons of this church? So disciples. No, I'm talking about, hang on. Um, am I confusing you? This, this three. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, a person who's appointed as a canon, normally is a part of a chapter of a cathedral. And they, as Ruth said, they administer the, the cathedral. Oh. Uh, yeah. Chapter, chapter is a very name for vestry. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Next time you have a look at the cathedral we'll go in Hamilton, there's usually a place up by the altar there where they have their own chairs. But, um, Oh, back in Bishop Hui's days, we used the word canon to identify those who are teachers out in the field. So they're really not part, they're really not part of a chapter, but they also, yeah, they are actually part of a the teaching fraternity, eh? Wasn't it yeah. chief? Yeah. Yep. That's right. John, sorry. Are they the people who administer the church law, or is that another group? Who oh, the chapter? No, the canons. Oh, the canons. The canons are the rules oh. and regs and the um, yeah. But the, the, is the diocese, mm. and normally the diocese have the one uh, cathedral. You look a bit confused there, Waitapa. Yeah, because, um, <laughs> you know, Chris is a canon, isn't he? He said he was. Oh, Chris, um, Chris um, Huriwai, yes. Yeah. Yes, he is. And I asked him one day, well, when he was up here, and I asked him, what does a canon do? And <laughs> he, he said to me, oh, assist the bishop. Mm. Yeah, teaching, a teaching group, yeah. basically. It belongs to the uh, the team, the team of uh, of training people. Yeah. So that's the bishop's, um, yeah, it's the bishop's group to train people. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. There's, There's a, a three or four definitions in regard to this word canon. Yes. Yeah. That could well be confusing. Yes. But for us as Tikanga Māori in the Hāi Mīnari, um, I think it stemmed from Bishop Hui when he used the word canon to identify teaching staff out in the field. Oh, it's like a missioner then. Well, at that stage we had archdeacons who looked after the areas. Then we had canons who were the teachers out in the field. And, um, yeah. And because many Pōwhari yeah, was one of those we were actually called uh, Kaifakamana. Yeah. Okay. With, which is the same thing as a canon. <laughs> mm. Or oh, equivalent, equivalent. Yeah. Very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. When, mm -hmm. you, when you didn't grow up with it. Very much so. And the canons are also referred to our constitution, the canons and constitution of the Anglican Church, and they also refer to the um, the New Testament, because that's where a lot of our our um, 
rules and regs came rules from actually. Yeah. 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 It's from the New Testament. It's like Parliament. All those new parliamentarians. They had to learn all of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. they, all, they had to learn uh, how the, the structure of Parliament works. Yeah. And it works on the same principle as the church. They all got their different little jobs. Yeah. They, they're given a name for those different little jobs. That's right. Yeah. So, so we've inherited it from, from the old church of England. That's right, because I'm saying the church is also referred to, uh, in regards to its governance process, Westminster. Um, Westminster, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And that comes from, yeah. If anyone asks me, um, that my brother who's a, who's a canon, um, I just say, oh, well, he's just a big shot. That's <laughs> <laughs> <I'll> right. <try. Yeah. laughs> yeah. Ah, copy. And of course, the position of a canon is what? Uh, priest? No, a canon. Reverend. So, identifying the different levels, if you like, for a canon. First is the office, and his office is that of a priest. His title is that of the Reverend Canon. Yeah. And the position he holds is a canon within the structure. Yeah. Clear as my day, Papa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have another thing over to the side, um, titled Lay Canon. Yeah. Well, I think the lay canons really are those that have just been um, licensed by the bishop to hold that position for a particular reason. Now, in this case, I'm not too sure. In the administration. I, I didn't realize that Pucky was one. And what's his role as a lay canon there, Chief? Sorry, Sylvia. What's Pucky's role? Uh, his role basically is just to be a big shot. <laughs> uh, okay, and keep, keep everyone in, in line. Yeah, keep okay. everyone in line. <laughs> and, and to recognize uh, influence from the parish, I think. Yeah. yeah, that's right, because I know um, Eddie Poor Tucker Jesus was a, appointed a or licensed a canon because of his work. Within Atuatanga, I think it was. And I think so was Timmy Biddle. That's right. Yeah. We really should um, address him as canon before. <laughs> only, only during the official meetings. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, um, is a lay canon. So, really, is he just is it just a title yeah in that, in that his case yeah mm. Mm. okay see at the moment like say um during bishop Hui's um time tewaka and i were archdeacons mm. okay now when <laughs> when rahu became our bishop we were made um archdeacons emeritus which means it's an honorary title that we both can still use. Um, but otherwise, to work on I just priests. Mm. Okay. okay. You're waiting for, waiting for me to step in. <laughs> I think that, that um, the three of you are still archdeacons. Yep. Um, because it's a title for life. Yeah, exactly. Like, like a priesthood. Yep. Okay, awesome. Awesome discussion. 
Okay, let's uh, move on to our dean. The office of a dean is. Do you know what a dean is? Priest. No. Priest? No, I don't know. I need no deacon. Ah, the office of a dean is, of course, a priest. You know what a dean is, eh? Dean is a yeah, normally um, the cathedral. Oh, oh like the head of the cathedral. Yeah. Okay. And so the office they hold, the dean holds, again, is that office of a priest. And the title of a dean? Depends on what is. Um, how high is. up he is, and um, and the, the very reverend. Exactly. What is it? Very oh, reverend. The yep. Yeah. Um, the very reverend. Yeah. Oh. That is the title of the dean of a cathedral. Is that a capital B? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they hold office of a priest, their title is the very reverend, and the position they hold is Dean. Dean. Can you go back yes. to the uh, arch? The dean there in charge of the service of the school. Yeah. Shall I mention that? Yeah. Okay. Schools I have deans. Oh, that's a different visa. <laughs> <laughs> I know there was deans at uh, at uni, mm. but in this case, this is our um, church one. Office of, the church one, yeah. Can can you go okay. back to archdeacons? No. no, you can't go backwards. No, we're going forward. She has a hang up about deep archdeacons. <laughs> well, she has on up. one all the time. They're coming up. <laughs> So at the moment we're talking about the office of a dean, the priest, the title of the dean is very reverend and of course the position they hold is exactly that. A that very reverend, eh? Yep. Okay. Archdeacons. The office of an archdeacon is? Priest. Is archdeacon? No. Uh, yeah. I forget we're talking about the office, wait, okay. Oh, okay, <laughs> priest. Oh, yeah. So the office of an archdeacon is the priest. The title they hold? Archdeacon. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, reverend. Venerable. The venerable. Oh, what? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now you should get the third one right, Wait, okay. The position they hold is? And if you got your doctor, it's a venerable doctor. Hey, Venerable doctor? So, that's so that's the wife's title. The wife is a venerable doctor. Okay, well, no, so yeah, you, I didn't know. You better call me by, by my name, Venerable Venerable. Uh, till yeah. <laughs> there's no reverend, eh? There's venerable no. doc to Waka, is it? Well, that depends yes. because I'm saying this is the basics. Um, the office of an archdeacon, the priest, the title is the venerable, the position is an archdeacon. However, if in this case, like Tewaka also holds a doctorate, and those uh, who hold other titles are included in their title. Okay. So, and that's why it becomes the Venerable Dr. Tewaka Melbourne. And when he actually retires, it'll be, what's the, what's the word you used before? The miracles. Um, what's the word to say that you've retired? Very oh, It'll be. Retired. Uh, it'll be the Venerable Dr. Tewaka Melbourne retired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's where the difference is sometimes, whatever. Depends on whether that person also holds another title. Mm. 
um, you know, a, doc a doctorate or anything else. From so, so if he didn't hold a doctorate, would he have just been the venerable Tewaka? Aye. As uh, yeah. Kepucha. All right. Ooh. And he started to look venerable. Okay. <laughs> yep. Thank you. That's cool. Bishop. And the bishop. The office of the bishop is? Bishop. Priest. Uh, <laughs> no, the bishop is the third um, lot of holy orders, if you like. Holy orders, yeah. yeah. Remember we talked about that? The holy orders of a deacon, of a priest, of a bishop. Okay, so what's the bishop's title? Um, bishop's title. Very reverend. A bishop. No, that's the office he holds. Priest. No, his title oh. is his title is the right reverend. The right reverend. Oh, okay. oh. I better write it all down. <laughs> Right, Reverend Bishop Ngarahu. Hi, hi. And the position, of course, he holds is that of a bishop. Bishop, yeah. Okay. And of course, the Archbishop. Archbishop holds the office of a Archbishop. No. Of a priest. Of a priest. Oh, oh. oh, well, holy. Archbishop holds the office of a bishop. Oh. Now, the title of the archbishop is? Very reverend. No. Um. <laughs> holy reverend. No. The most reverend. Well, I was right. <laughs> 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 so that's Bishop holds the office of a bishop. His title is the most reverend, and the position he holds is Bishop. Oh, oh. <laughs> Chippen. Archbishop. Oh. oh, yes, yes. Most reverend. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't know any of that. <clears throat> I'm saying this this is all part of our leadership structure, right? Eh? Positions that each one holds, the office they hold, um, their roles, their functions. <clears throat> and it's all part of our understanding of our leadership roles. And you're right, you know, because um you sometimes we get to ask all the questions, eh, from the yeah. public. <clears throat> and it helps if you know the right title, if, yes. you're writing, if you're writing to the bishop or if you're speaking to him um, and you introduce him to somebody, um, you uh, introduce Narahu as the right reverend Narahu Kartani. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and the archbishop is the most reverend? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. It, is, it is handy to know all these because, as I say, it's all part of our leadership structure. Because I uh, just say this is our archbishop, you know. Yeah. It goes back a long way. Mm. It's good. I wouldn't be able to say, "Oh, this is this is my nephew Don." I'm here. <laughs> He's the most reverend. Yeah. This is the most reverend. I'm here. All right. Hey, Pata, any questions? No, I'm, I'm just glad I'm sitting here. I'm glad I tuned in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
membership? Well, basically that is it, um, people. Oh. So to summarize, um, let's see. <clears throat> your survey or your commenting, just email those to Jasmine. Um, yeah, because I think, oh, the next one was, um, and like I say, sorry, if you want a copy of this PowerPoint, yeah, you can, it's, you can get it through the office. Okay, yeah, I will. Do it. Yeah, that was great. Okay. Yeah. Now I know our manutaki has gone. Um, going to do a tangi. But I think our next our next session is the tenth of November. Next session. No. Which is Tewaka's one. Mihingari um, Tanga. November. Mihingari Tanga. Hi. Okay. Oh, it's ready. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. All right. Hi, Chief. Yo. Uh, for a copy of my data, yeah, please. All right, thank you, everyone. Kapai Roma, thank you for joining us. Kapai Koto Natapuke, and very good, Joe. We'll talk yeah. about it later on, eh? Okay, yeah, okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.